Hey, what's up guys? This is Nightwing2303 from wordtesters.com and what the heck? Sorry, my mouse just lost connection. It's back now, um, but this is uh, basically uh, just the first um, ep episode. I don't know. I don't like to call videos shows or episodes because their production value is completely different. Um, YouTube videos, at least from my perspective, for the most part, are not shows. There are versions that are shows, like Jacques. He does like really good ones. They're they're like episodes. Um, but uh yeah mine is uh mine are just videos so um today is uh ask nightwing and I'm logging into that email account right now i don't know how long i want these videos to be um you know and i want these videos to be like real like laid back and everything like no I just don't want any, like, I'll do some editing and stuff, but uh, mainly just to kind of shout out the person that asked the question and to show the question itself, um, but that's about it. Now, I just logged in here. It looks like there's 120 emails so far, which isn't too bad, but um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, but yeah, so I'm going to answer as many as I can. It's almost 11.30, so I don't know how long I want this to be, but maybe maybe 30 to 40 minutes, 45 max. I don't want it to be too long. So um, I'm just going to read through the questions. Uh, I'm going to answer the questions. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So um, something just real laid back. And uh, basically, just like the segment is called, just ask Nightwing. You can ask me whatever, like my thoughts. And uh, these things are not featured in performance reviews because performance reviews just have to be very straightforward with the performance review uh, itself. And... Um, a lot of times I don't get to put in certain things like if you like ask me like how the shoe looks or what the price is and what my thoughts are on that those have nothing to do with performance like you should stick with a budget or buy what you like and all that stuff so but if you want to know that stuff from me this is the place to ask me so um, you can always ask me at asknightwing at gmail.com and so let's just go ahead and get right into it so first question comes from Gavin Conley and uh, he says he wants to know what NBA basketball teams I like, uh, like what's my, his personal favorite is the Chicago Bulls. Uh, me personally, I grew up as a, a Bulls fan just because that's where Jordan played and he was the best player ever, um, or is the best player ever. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I grew up like, like I would root for the, for the Bulls, um. And I am a Warriors fan also, and it's, like, nice because now the Warriors actually don't suck. Um, so for, like, my entire life, except for when I was really, really little, um, we had, like, run TMC and all that stuff. Uh, so the Warriors were okay at that point, but it was really only for a season when Weber left and stuff. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so so the Warriors are my team, especially now, like, now that I'm older and everything, you have more, like, pride for your own hometown and stuff, so... That's what it is. I'm a Warriors fan, Dub Nation. Um, I still like the Bulls, though. Like, Derrick Rose is an amazing player. His preseason right now is awesome. So, um, yeah, somebody, uh, Jaron, sent me a video link last night. And this dude took two dribbles, went cross-court. And the guy's lightning fast, dude. And this is after these two injuries that have been, like, you know, freak injuries and stuff. And the guy's just... The guy's amazing. I love Derrick Rose. I think he's one of the best point guards. Even though he hasn't been playing for two years, I still think, like, from what he's shown of his playing time, he's one of the best point guards that we've had in a while. So, most dynamic, at least. Um, he's kind of like a Chris Paul uh, as far as, like, speed goes, John Wall, stuff like that. But then he's also, like, Russell Westbrook, where, like, he could just bounce right off the gym. So, um, but, yeah, I'm a Warriors fan through and through. I like the Bulls, though, as well. Always had a, you know, a thing for the Bulls. And, uh... That is that. So next question. If I butchered your names, I'm sorry. <laughs> but but uh, so we... We da ba da? What? Uh, Bo 55? Whatever. I don't know what, the, what that... So yeah, you're asking a question though. Uh, what is the worst basketball shoe you ever played in, period, and why? Um, the worst one... The worst one that I just like that comes right off the top of my head is the Reebok Zigtag. I don't remember which one it was, but they all suck. Those things just felt like bricks. Um, 
so yeah i'm not i'm not a huge fan <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of zig tech their running stuff though the zig the zig runners like those were pretty comfortable they had a different density foam the zig was a little bit thinner and then they also had like really comfortable insoles um the zig tech basketball shoe they just had like weird frames on top of it which you know dense foam with a dense plastic with ortholite which is very fluffy and stuff it just was like you were just riding on a brick so um, those were some of the worst shoes i've probably ever played in period um, it didn't help that i was playing in those i remember after an injury too i can't remember what i injured it was either my ankle or my knee um, one of the two but it it was really painful so um but yeah i didn't like those shoes at all so Jacob Hoskins, he asks, hey Nightwing, uh, here's a question for your Ask Nightwing series. Where can you buy Kobe 9 high tops? Nike is sold out and finish line of Foot Locker don't sell them. I can't find them anywhere. Uh, they have Kobe 9 high top, or I can't find them anywhere where they have Kobe 9 high tops for the retail price of 225. Um, so it really depends on your area like my area like if you just go out in stores usually you'll find them um, finish line does not carry the kobe though unfortunately so uh the only place where you can find those in a store most of the time is a Foot Locker. um and then certain shoe palace locations do end up having kobe's i can't remember if they get the high tops or if it's just the em or just the low but um the, the elite low but for whatever reason it's it's primarily Foot Locker is your best option uh east bay East Bay Foot Locker, Finish, not Finish Line, Foot Action, and Champs. Those are all the same, those are the same warehouse. So if you go into any of their websites, it's all going to be the same inventory. So I would just pick one, East Bay being the biggest one, and work with that. Um, if you can't find them, um, sites like myself, uh, weartesters.com, like last night I posted something from, uh, let me look at it real quick because I can't remember the, I can't remember the store's name. Um, but they were for just under retail. They were available currently. They're sold out now. Oh, and so um, endclothing.com. Uh, they had them for like 185 instead of 225, um, and then they ship like internationally and stuff. So, uh, but yeah. So if you look at like websites like like mine, uh, Sneaker News, uh, Soul Collector, stuff like that, there's always updates on those. Uh, the best thing though is to just get out there and and look. Um, as far as like release days, you know, Nike store, East Bay Foot Locker, stuff like that for the Kobe because uh, uh, finish line doesn't have them at all. So Chris Mejia says, what are your thoughts on the most recent TMNT movie? Um, I am a huge Ninja Turtle fan. So I have been since I was a kid. Anything 90s, it doesn't just, or 80s, 90s, it doesn't mean just shoes. It means the whole like genre, like the era. Um, I'm a huge fan of, so like, you know, He-Man, Transformers, G.I. Joe's especially. That G.I. Joe movie back in the day was sick. I think I still have that on VHS. But um, as far as the my thoughts on the new TMNT movie, I thought it was fun as hell. Uh, I know that my, my I took my daughter and my two, uh, uh, my niece and my nephew uh, to see it. And um, I know that they all liked it. My nephew is actually a new gen TMNT fan. He knows it from the, the new series, the Nickelodeon series, whereas I've watched every series since the original one. Um, and I own like the original comic books and all that stuff. So uh, I've always been a huge fan of Ninja Turtles. And I thought that this new movie was really, really fun. Um, it wasn't a perfect movie, but, uh, you know, I'm more of the type that's just appreciative of this kind of stuff. Like I'm when I was a kid, like, I was always like, man, I wish I could see Spider-Man or I wish I could see the Avengers and stuff like that on, on whether it be TV or, like, a live-action movie. And it was never really possible because of, you know, like, they never, they just couldn't do it. So um, there was always some kind of legal issue or there wasn't enough, like, graphics and, uh, like, technology at the time wasn't that great. So there's always something stunting them. Um, the best Ninja Turtle movie, though, in my opinion, is the original one. Um, but yeah, this new one was fun though. Uh, it was definitely a blast to watch. All right. So Guillermo Silva, he says, what shoe do you think will be the best hoop shoe to drop this year? Uh, Rose five boost LeBron 11, which I think he meant LeBron 12. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know right now. Uh, cause if you ask me like what my favorite is, I probably can give you like a good list. Um, but there's something from every brand that's awesome. So if you if you do happen to pick a shoe, 
it's going to be really hard to pick a bad one because, I mean, um, the LeBron 12s are awesome. I don't know when they're releasing, though. I just heard uh, yesterday... Whoa. I just heard yesterday that um, the release was suspended like indefinitely until further notice. So like I don't know when those are even dropping, but um, I really like that shoe. Uh, surprisingly, I'll I'll get into that in their performance review. Um, and then uh, the the Kobe Nine is just an amazing shoe. You can't really you can't go wrong with either one of them, whether it be the Elite, the Elite Low, or the EM uh, version. Uh, they're all really awesome, and. Uh, I love the Clutch Fit Drive. Um, uh, what else? There was other ones. I'm trying to think. There's so many shoes that have released. Let me let me check my let me check my site real quick. Um, let's see, the 29 was an awesome one. Also, uh, KD7 is a good one. Nike's Big Three is is good money this year. Uh, last year they were they were decent, but um, you know, like the KD6 completely left that off the list. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't anywhere near as good as it should have been. Um, KD7 is much better. Um, and then you got Brand Black. Uh, their their J Crossover One was good, but the J Crossover Two is like awesome. Um, I haven't put out the review for these yet because I still haven't had like an actual retail version. But this is a shoe, and uh, I really love this. Like this woven upper is amazing. Um, I love woven. I love mesh. All that stuff. It just feels really good. I really preferred leathers and uh, like raw materials before, um, but then I feel like this is like just as good, but without all of the breaking time needed, and it has ventilation on top of that most of the time. So um, I really love this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, these are amazing shoes. I heard that they're they're going to be a, a small run in November, but it's going to be super limited. But then they're going to release like like these colorways and stuff like normal pairs. Um, next year, like early 2015. So, um, but yeah, this is a an amazing shoe. I love this thing. Um, the reason why I haven't reviewed it again is because I haven't had a full-on retail pair or like a final version. I've been helping them wear test the shoe and I give them like feedback and stuff. Um, I have another pair somewhere over there that's um, totally different than that one uh, and all that stuff. So, um, like that was the first one I wore and I gave feedback and then they fixed those things and then they sent me a new pair and all that stuff, so it's really cool to be a part of that, um, but yeah, so like Brand Black's got some good stuff, um, there's, there's all kinds of shoes, uh, that had released this year, but yeah, those are, those are some of my favorites, uh, just right off the bat, like those, those are some of my favorites, you got Jordan, Nike, um, uh, what was it, uh, Brand Black and, um, Under Armour, and then you have, those are my favorite brands, and then you have the Adidas Rose 5, have not even gotten them in yet, the most recent one is this, but I'm I'm really waiting for the the boost because uh, boost was a epic fail on those crazy lights. Um, so yeah, so hopefully uh, the Rose Five is 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 awesome as I hope it will be because um, I I really like the way that those look too. But uh, you know, but yeah, so for right now those are probably like some of my favorites is like Nike's Big Three, um, the Jordan Twenty Nine, and then uh, Brand Black Under Armour. Uh, Micro G, Clutch Fit, Drive, <laughs> long, long names, and then I'm ho hoping for the Rose Five. That's gonna be awesome. <clears throat> okay, so this is from James. He says he has multiple questions. He says there, or let's see, are there any performance reviews that you recorded and forgot or never put out, or are there any performance sneakers you bought and never used them? Will you ever bring back the performance topics? Nightwing versus Winter Soldier. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we got some performance questions, and we got some comic book nerd stuff. So are there any performance reviews that I recorded and forgot or never put out? I think there's at least one, but I don't remember what it is, and hence forgetting to even put it out. Um, are there performance sneakers that you bought and never used them? Uh, yes. Um, oh, also for the other thing, there's there's performance shoes that I've played in and, that, and just never recorded a review. Um, Actually, there's none, there's none right in my vicinity. But um, uh, you know, some of the the Anta stuff, the Rondo Lows, those are one of them where I played in them. They killed. Like, if I can't f fully play in them, if I can't do my full on uh, wear test that, that I like to do, then I don't review the shoe completely. But if I can't wear them, also, like, I just I won't review it. I'm not gonna like play in them for a little bit 
and be like, oh, they kind of suck in this area or that area or whatever, and then just base my review off of that because I just don't like doing that. I feel like it's inaccurate, but um, I'm getting older, so like there's certain things that I just can't play in, and I usually don't find out until I'm playing in it, and then I realize, oh, crap, my knees can't handle these. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, it is, it is what it is, but, um, yeah, there's, there's a few shoes that I have that I just haven't played in that I am holding on to because I hope to play in them one day, but you never know. Um, and there's, uh, let's see, so bring back the performance topics. Um, it's possible in the comment section below, uh, leave topics that you'd like me to talk about and then we'll see if I can squeeze those in there. And then Nightwing versus Winter Soldier. Um, my gut reaction or instinct is to just pick Nightwing because that's my dude right there. Um, but realistically, I think Winter Soldier would take him because he's he's an assassin, you know what I mean? And he's got like a bionic arm and stuff. Uh, like one punch from that arm would probably knock Grayson's head off. So, um, And he took Captain America like pretty well like I mean I'm not talking about the movie versions I'm talking about like the actual comics and stuff so uh, I, th I think Winter Soldier would take it um, I think he's more deadly it's hard because you got Nightwing who's you know trained by Batman and I'd pick Batman over Winter Soldier but still I think that I think Winter Soldier would probably take it but I want to pick Nightwing but that's what it is thanks for the questions though those are those are some good ones so I don't know what your name is, but Jeffrey June Malabago. Malabago? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> it says, hello, sir. I'd uh, just like to ask you, or ask from you, if, what is your opinion or any comments about the Nike Lunar Hyper Quickness, since you didn't have a video regarding with the shoes. Uh, thank you, sir. More power to all of your videos, and I'm a big fan of your videos. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. And um, as far as the Lunar Hyper Quickness, let's see, those those have the same tooling as the Hyper Rev. Um, so traction is going to be the same. That traction was great for me on certain floors. Uh, certain floors it's not, so dusty setting or um, unfinished floors. Not unfinished, but like floors that need to be refinished um, badly. Uh, those floors you'll slide around and stuff. And then... Um, uh, let's see, so you'll get the same traction there. Cushions, sort of the same but different. Uh, obviously, the Hyper Rev had full-length zoom, and then the Lunar Hyper Quickness is lunar. Um, however, because it's the same uh, tooling, which is the midsole and outsole, uh, it's most likely just that footbed where the zoom was. They probably just replaced that with a lunar insert. Um, and then the zoom was only like a few millimeters thick, you know what I mean? So you only really have a few millimeters of lunar, which is sort of the cheap way to do it. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how cushion's going to be. It's going to be very thin. Basically, the slightly thicker than an insole of lunar, which is not a lot of lunar foam. I think the Hyperdunk has a little bit more than that. And then um, the upper should be fairly similar. It's mostly mesh. It's got some fuse overlays, so it should be a nice fit, decent support, and uh, not overly supportive or anything like that. But, you know, so... That, that's what I think. Um, ventilation should be fine because it's mostly a mesh upper and all that stuff. That, those, those are shoes where I'd, I'd like to performance re review them, but I mean, they're so similar to previous stuff that it's like you can kind of like pick apart from those past reviews and put them together and then be like, oh yeah, you know, they probably play like this. Um, so I'd say that it's a decent performer. I'd wait till they go on sale, uh, personally. That's a shoe where you can pr probably find those at an outlet soon for like 40 bucks and then that would be a good buy. All right, so... Andrianos something. <laughs> Sorry about you guys' names, guys. Hi, I'm a guard forward, 16 years old, almost 6 feet tall and weigh just 163 pounds. Uh, I have a budget of $120. I'm considering the Clutch Fit Drive and the Rose 4.5. So unfortunately, UA doesn't ship shoes to Greece, so I have the Soldier 8s or the Crazy Quick 2s as my third options. What? Wait, what? Second... Okay, which do you think I should get? <laughs> okay, okay. so you got four shoes, three options. All right. Um, well, first off, uh, East Bay ships internationally. So 
East Bay has the clutch fit drive. Um, they might still have the 4.5 D rows for cheaper. And uh, any of the shoes that I've performance reviewed, uh, you'll get the performance information there. Um, as far as which one I think you should get, uh, I don't do that. Um, I don't pick shoes for people very adamant about that. I will not pick a shoe for you. Uh, what I'll do is I'll test and review the shoe and give you all the information you need to pick the shoe for yourself. Um, so whatever you need, traction cushion, materials, fit, support, whatever is like the highest on your level, like that's what you go by. So um, like I said in that performance topic, uh, how to pick a shoe, a basketball shoe, um, you know, go based off of your direct needs. So if your first thing that you need or want is traction, then that's your number one thing. So start comparing shoes like those shoes, those options. Go to the website, weartesters.com. Every review has a scorecard. And so take those scorecards and start comparing those attributes. So compare all of the traction. Um, whichever one has the best, if, if, if they all have like the same score, then you need to read or watch the review or both because I'll go in like and say, hey, it's not quite as good as this one, but it's still really great traction or whatever it is. So uh, that's how to that's how to pick your own shoe. I don't I don't do that though. I don't pick your guys' shoes for you. I just give you all the tools necessary you need to pick a good shoe for yourself based on your specific needs. Anthony Vasquez says, "Do you own any I Promise bands?" Um, no, I don't even know what an I Promise band is. I should probably look that up. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't own any. Don't know what they are. Um, so yeah, I I usually don't wear much on my wrists anyways, not anymore anyways, when when my uh, daughter was real young, she would always make me like bands, um, like at school or whatever, and I'd always, you know, wear those until they broke, uh, so yeah, and then it says, uh, my camera keeps shutting off, if anybody has a T3i, a Canon, um, the battery keeps shutting off on the camera, um, or not the battery, the recording capabilities, the T3i is a it's a good camera, it's got great quality and stuff, but that function is just a piece of junk. Um, so yeah, I just it'll turn off on me when I'm recording randomly. Uh, but anyway, so A Baller asks, Hey Nightwing, does the UA Clutch Fit Drives traction compare with the Kobe 9 slash EM slash Elite Low? Um, again, just like the previous question, um, I go in on that. like, And I've said specifically that like the, the 28s, the Kobe 9s, and there's another shoe, Penny 5. Those have been like some of the best traction ever. I've played on the worst floors in those shoes and all three of them have like outdone themselves. Like they have just the best traction I've ever had. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the answer. I mean, I give the answers in the reviews. So um, yeah, it's good to pay attention, especially when it's a traction. Traction is like the first thing I go over because it's one of the most important things to me. And uh, yeah, so th that's that's the thing, you know. It's it's really great traction, not it, not outdoors, just because it'll grind down really quickly. But Kobe Nine is some of the best traction I've ever had. So Jesse, uh, I'm not gonna even try to say your last name. Um, if you own WearTesters.com and you want to use Nightwing Nose as the n name of the Q and A, cool name for the segment, uh, why don't you host email on WearTesters.com and give yourself Nightwing Nose at WearTesters.com. That's a good point <laughs> so, uh yeah that's not a question that's a suggestion and um it's a that's a good idea i'm not super technical like i'm not a computer guy so i probably could have done that i probably should have done that but it's too late now so i will um if you have a question just email it to ask nightwing at gmail.com so plus i kind of ask nightwing is a decent name i guess for a series just that my hashtag is like nightwing knows so uh i would have preferred to have stuck with that so Ben Smith, actually I recognize you, you comment all the time on videos and stuff. He says, hey Nightwing, it's, uh, it's Ben Smith 4 from IG. If you could take aspects from any shoe you've played in and combine them into one shoe, what would you use? I'd love to know because there hasn't been a single shoe to get all nines or above in your scoring. And I find that odd because brands clearly watch your videos. Personally, I'd take the CP3-6 Traction, Kobe 8 or 9 Cushion, Lunar Flyknit 1 Upper with Dynamic Fit. It seems like maybe the J Crossover 2's Upper might be your choice from what, I've, from what you've said on IG. Thanks, Ben. 
So yeah, that is a good question. And those ones are really hard to answer because that kind of like, like what are my top shoes? Like that could change depending on the day and time that you ask me. Um, uh, like I said earlier though, the woven and mesh kind of uppers, I feel like those are like the next gen. I really love those. So I would take something like that. Minor fuse overlays, if any at all. Um, I, I'd probably just add some more like glue in the upper for structure and support. Um, that's something where like the Kobe 9, the fly knit, uh, I thought that it was like a really thin layer of fuse backing the entire upper. What it actually is, is, is really, uh, it's, it's a lot of glue um, and that soaks into the materials and that's why it's got that kind of flexible but crispy um, like feeling and stuff. And so that's, that's what that is. And I remember Brand Black explaining that to me that like, oh, that, this is how it works with wovens. And so um, when they sent me the very first shoe of the J Crossover 2, um, I was playing in a completely woven like forefoot and midfoot and uh, it was great for the first game but then that that upper started to stretch a lot uh, like the, the the fabrics um, and uh, yeah and I was just like man and my foot was like starting to slide over the footbed so I was like can you add some glue like in these areas uh, and I gave them like specific areas and then that's what they sent me the next time which was like updated and everything and that was like perfect after that so um, it was just enough glue, not too much. Like I felt like Kobe 9s with way too much glue on that. Um, as far as the, the traction and cushion, I mean, you can you can go with Micro G, I can go with Boost, uh, I can go with Lunar, I can go with Zoom, proper Zoom, not this new stuff that they've been using, a really thin Zoom. Um, so yeah, it really depends on like the time that you ask me, but it would have to have something woven on the upper because I think that that's amazing. I did like the KDs too with the, the mesh forefoot and then that posit backing i probably wouldn't use posit just because it's a little heavier than um i don't know than what you need but it is definitely supportive uh so yeah so i don't know what i'd pick and pull and all that stuff but it just really depends um like my answer today might be different than it was like five years ago so um but yeah i would definitely have something woven i think that that would be great Okay, so Denzel Aquino, he says, uh, or asks, what do you think of the clutch fit, clutch fit drive performance-wise, and what basketball shoe uh, do you prefer to hoop in? Um, well, I, I gave my thoughts on the performance of that shoe in their performance review. Um, it's, it's one of my favorites of the year. It's a great shoe, great traction, cushion, all that stuff. If you want more information, you can always just check the performance review. Um, and then what basketball shoe do I prefer to hoop in? Uh, right, right now, I think my go-to has been the J Crossover Two. Um, dang, I keep swiping over to this other screen on accident. Um, but yeah, the J Crossover Two is like always in my bag, and it's it's like my go-to shoe. So uh, those are those are one of my favorites right now. Um, maybe it's because I had something to do with the the process, like the wear test process and stuff, like behind the scenes. But for whatever reason, I just really they're really comfortable. Traction's awesome. And uh, I just really like how they feel. I can't wait till they're actually available so other people can wear them. And then they can chime in on what they think too. Because I, I like them. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to have other people like them also. Antonio Miranda, he asks, Are you going to do a review on the Lunar Hyper Quickness? That's the second, second one. I want to join the basketball team. And I want to know whether it's worth uh, getting the shoe for the season along with my Hyperfuse. Uh, 2013s. Um, well, like I was saying earlier, uh, the the tooling is is very similar to the Hyper Rev, so uh, the traction will be great on those courts where it's like perfect. But like those courts, if you play on one like for your high school that's not so perfect, uh, you might not have the best traction experience. So, um, but yeah, everything else will be like I was saying earlier, like everything will be decent and all that stuff. It'll be a, a good bang for your buck shoe once they drop on sale. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't plan on reviewing the shoe right now. I, I'm, I'm already like, I have like way too much on my plate as it is. So if I could fit them in there, then great. But if not, then, you know, like I said, I don't plan on it right, right now. And then let's see. So next question, Carlo, Carbonilla, Carbonilla, he asks, you haven't done a review on the Spawn 2 yet, and I just wanted to know which you think is better, the Spawn 2 or the Spawn 2 Low, and then he re 
replied to that email saying, never mind, laugh out loud. Didn't see your Spawn 2 review. Sorry about that. Um, well, <laughs> so uh, Spawn 2 is the same as a Spawn 1, but it's got uh, more durable upper and then way less ventilation. So same with the low. It's just, you know, the, the low is low and the high is high. Uh, they play exactly the same, in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, which one you choose. I just prefer low. So if I were to choose one, I'd go with the low tops right now. But um, if they made a spawn too low, then I'd go with that too. You can't, you can't go wrong with either one. It's pretty much the same shoe. Uh, or Shoham, uh, he actually he won uh, some laces. And uh, uh, the videos, if you comment with your IG name with a, with an actual comment, don't just comment your IG name. But if you leave a comment plus your IG name, and the video reaches a thousand or more likes, then I pick a random comment, and they get a set of wear testers laces. This kid actually got some. I recognize his name. And uh, he actually lives all the way in Israel, so I had to, like, ship him overseas and stuff, which is expensive for some laces. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so, um, but anyways, he says, Hey, Chris, once again, it's Or Shoham, and uh, love the new night Ask Nightwing segment. Sorry, I can't read today. As you probably know, the Cement 4s are rumored to release sometime in 2015. Do you know anything about it? When it will come out? Uh, what do you think about bringing back the Nike Air on the back? Keep up the good work. <clears throat> um, so, let's see. I've heard that the room, that it is, blah. I've heard that it is rumored, um, but I haven't seen anything confirmed. Uh, I did not see that shoe at Jordan Brand uh, when I was visiting Portland, and if I did, I wouldn't say. Um, but uh, what I think about if they come out with a Nike Air, I think that's cool. Um, I would grab a pair or two and uh, stick them with the rest of the ones that I got. I think I have three pairs from the other, the, uh, the last time that they released with a Jumpman on the back. So um, it's one of my favorite shoes of all time. So I'm I wouldn't be mad, <laughs> especially if it had better leather. Because the other ones had some really crap leather on them, so. Um, but yeah, I would be down, and uh, I don't know if they're coming out though, uh, for sure. Like I haven't heard anything confirmed. So R Bizarro, he says who. R Bizarro, he says who'd you model your style of play after and why? Um, I didn't. I didn't model. I don't. I don't play like anybody except for myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, I don't, I'm a shooter. I roll around screens. Um, I'm more of a strategic player, uh, all that stuff. So when I handle the ball, um, it's usually my intention is to either get a good pass in, uh, you know, dish the ball or, um, uh, shoot it like quickly and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm a shooter. I have a shooter mentality. That's how I play the game. I guess sort of like like Kyle Korver, Ray Allen. If you see how they kind of play, uh, they they run baseline uh, a lot. They they get up on the wing or the elbow, um, and then they use uh, screens really really well. And uh, that's that's what I try to do. So, um, like if I'm playing point, it's pick and roll. Uh, if I'm playing the two, I'm usually running without the ball. Uh, you know, trying to get around screens and stuff. And like I said, being strategic and everything. So. Um, but yeah, so I don't I don't really play like anybody. I just I'm a I'm a shooter. So that's how I that's how I was trained, and so that's how I play. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's that. Raymond Trin he says, Hey Nightwing, do you prefer the Kobe Nine Elite Low or the Kobe Nine EM? Thank you. Um, well, like I said earlier, uh, I can go with either. I I can go with the high, the low, the the EM version. They were all really great shoes pretty much the same shoes but with all like little different variations and stuff so i can go with i can go with either one so i don't know how to say this name so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna try but he says hello uh what is the song at the end of your videos lebron 11 versus lebron 12 lebron 12 versus jordan 29 you are awesome greetings your name um thanks <laughs> i appreciate it and uh i you know, I don't know. Let me check. Let me check the, the song name. Um, so it says it's a Flume remix, and it says the title of the name is Higher. That means nothing to me. I don't know who Flume is, and yeah, if you do, then cool. Um, 
I know a lot of people like that track, and I like it too. It sounded cool, which is why I use it. Um, but yeah, it's a remix. I don't even remember where I found it. Probably found it on like SoundCloud or something. So I have to use like non-copyrighted stuff, otherwise you get hit on YouTube with flags and stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's the song name, I believe, I think. And then LeBron 11 versus LeBron 12. I personally like the 12 a little bit more. Um, the posit on LeBron 11 was a little bit too restricting for me, like if you're going to compare the two. Um, and then I like the like the, the LeBron 11 flex a little bit funny because of the posit. And the, the, the way that the drop in midsole was also double last but not secure. Uh, they just flex a little bit a little bit weird. So um, not a bad shoe, though. It was a really good shoe last year. But, uh, yeah, I like Le LeBron 12 much more. I love the, the woven upper. Um, and then I really like the, the way that the, the midsole flexes. Um, it's like the most flexible LeBron I've ever played in. And uh, I, I just really like the 12. I actually really, really, really like the 12. I'm surprised because those things, I, I didn't think I was going to like them at all. It was not on my, like, most anticipated to, to test list. Um, every other shoe was pretty much on that list except for those, and those end up being one of my favorites, which is surprising. So, um, but yeah, I really like the LeBron 12. So whenever the heck those things release, I think it'll be a really good shoe for people to play in. Um, a lot of different styles would be able to be played with that shoe too because they're flexible yet supportive but not restricting. You know what I mean? So um, I, I think it's a good shoe. Uh, LeBron 12 versus Jordan 29, that's that's a real hard one, man. I mean, I'd say the LeBron 29 just by a hair. Uh, for one, I love the woven upper on those. For two, the traction was just a little bit more consistent. Um, and then three, the, the cushion, like the cushion on the forefoot of the 29 is better than the foot cushion on the forefoot of the 12, but then the cushion of the heel of the 12 is way better than the 29. So... Um, you could flip a coin and pick one, and I think that you'd be good to go. So, uh, actually, maybe, I don't know. Dang. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, I can go either way. Um, maybe to 29 by a hair. So, thanks thanks for the questions. That's a hard, That was a hard one. Um, let's see what my time is. It's noon. So, I've been doing this for a little while. Um, maybe I should stop now? I don't know. Uh... So, yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of comments or questions. Let me let me do let me do like two or three more, and then then I'll go, and then uh then I'll do the I'll do the rest of them later. You could just keep adding emails, uh, like you could just keep sending questions to the emails, and I'll just I'll get to them. Um, I just won't get to, I just might not get to them like right away, um, but I'm I'm gonna if wh wherever I stop, I'm gonna pick up right where I left off next week so um, so your questions will be answered for sure um, so Micah Jewel says hey Nightwing uh, I was wondering what would be a better outdoor hoop shoe in terms of traction durability and ankle support the 2014 Hyperfuse or the Rose 7733 thanks um, okay let me reread that better outdoor shoes in terms of traction durability and ankle support. Um, well, for one, ankle support is a myth. It's not real. Uh, ankle support is, is just not. It's lockdown is your support, which keeps your foot and the shoe one-to-one. -one. The best one-to-one -one fit you can get, the more support you'll have because your ankle is your natural support system. Your ankle, that tiny little thing, the little ball joint with a bunch of little bones in it and stuff, ligaments and tendons, that little thing is connecting your foot, which is your stable base and platform, up with your body, which is a giant stick. So it's like, I don't have a, maybe I do. Yeah, so, Lion-O here will be our example. So you have this giant body here, right? All this weight, and it's all resting on this platform and base. And the thing that's keeping these two pieces connected and supported is that tiny little joint the little ball, which is your ankle. Um, and then inside of that, there are ligaments. There's a bunch of tendons, uh, your Achilles being one of them, um, and all that stuff. And you got a bunch of nerves and all that, all that stuff. But that doesn't, that doesn't count. So, um, but anyway, so all of that's keeping these two things connected and as one. And if you think about it, when you're moving, um, you're putting all of this weight and pressure on this tiny little area of your body. That has nothing to do with shoes. You could do that barefoot and you're gonna have the same ankle support because your ankle is your support. So um, 
yeah, so ankle support in a shoe is, is bogus, it's garbage, it's, a, it's not just a gimmick, it's like literally not true. So, um, so your ankle is, is your body's natural support system. So the better fit uh, is going to give you the most support because it's going to allow you to do things more naturally. So um, that's, that's that. As far as traction and durability, um, I didn't play in the Row 773. I had Jaren do that one because I, I can't take all of these shoes. Um, he's actually, I, I'm training him to do what I do. Um, so uh, one day when I can't do it anymore, he'll be the one to pick up where I left off. But um, so yeah, so he's, he's working on some of those shoes. Hyperfuse 2014, I haven't played in those yet. So I don't know uh, right now. Um, I, I'm going to start playing in those this week, though, because I just finished the LeBron 12s. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully, I'll have an update for you. Or I won't have an update, but I'll have a review that you can compare with Jaren's review on the shoe, and then you can do it that way. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question on ankle support, which is not going to be found in a shoe. Like, so that's why a shoe like the Ectio, where it's, it's literally like keeping your foot like, like it's in there, uh, that is a shoe where like you're not going to have ankle issues because there's no way that that your foot and that shoe is like moving in two different directions at once and that's usually what ends up happening is that your foot's going one way the shoe still wants to go another way and boom you have an ankle injury so um, but yeah there's no such thing as ankle support in the shoe uh, John Mor Moradis I don't know how to say your name I'm sorry guys I am not good with names <laughs> so uh, he says, totally not shoe-related, but what kind of genre of music do you listen to? Um, or what kind of genre of music do you usually listen to? I pretty much will listen to whatever, uh, except for country. Country country almost puts me in a bad mood. And I know that, that sounds weird, but I just think that country music is just... At least the stuff that I've heard, it's like, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me at all. I don't want to talk bad about it, because I know that there's a lot of people that like country and stuff. So uh, kudos to them, but... That's not me. I'm not one of those guys. So I'll pretty much listen to anything except for country. And uh, yeah, that's what that is. Um, Demetrius, he asked, Hey Nightwing, I just wanted to ask you a question on retros. What year do you think the best retros came out? This will be the last question because this is a good question. So it's a good question to uh, end off with. But um, so the, the, best, the best year... Um, Well, it hasn't been the past four years, so I'll give it that. So it's been a while. Actually, maybe the the very best year was probably uh, I think it was '94 when he retired the first time, because um, those are the first. That's the first time that a shoe really like retroed. You had shoes like Chucks and stuff, which have always been in superstars and things like that. Shell toes that have always been in production, but they're not necessarily like a retro. Um, it's a retro style, but not like a retro release, and so. I'd say 94 is probably the best because those were the closest to the originals. It was only a few years off from the originals also, so it was like you can't really mess up. Um, the best year since then, though, I'd probably say when they first started retroing again, which was like 1999, 2000 to 2001, those are probably the best years, it's the best quality. Um, the materials are the closest to the original stuff as possible. Um, because that's, that's what ends up happening is that, like, overseas certain factories shut down certain materials are no longer in production and all that stuff. So when they're trying to retro something, it's like they literally can't find or create what used to be. So they have to go a different route. Um, and they, you know, sometimes they do their best, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes, well, I wouldn't say sometimes they don't. It's just like sometimes they're trying to do things to please certain people like the people that complain about creases so you end up with a really hard crappy leather and then people like me don't like that whereas like the 99 fours were way better than that um so you know it's little things like that where you can't please everybody they do their best i guess um while trying to keep their profit margins of course and uh which is understandable it's a business um but uh yeah as far as like the best years i'd say the original year of release for the retros which was the 94 um, retros, it was the ones, the twos, and the threes, um, I, or was it 94? I'm pretty sure it was 94. I'm having a brain fart now. I have too many dates in my head, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that was the first run of retros, and then, like I said, that when I, when I first started, like, noticing retros was 99, that's when they first started coming out again, uh, the threes and fours, 
a couple of the ones, um, 2000, 2001, the 11s, uh, stuff like that. So that would be, that would be my opinion. Um, some of those shoes or most of them are probably not wearable anymore, except for like some ones because those midsoles don't crumble and stuff. But then there's, there's people that'll do like midsole swaps and stuff like that. So you can wear them, re-glue, uh, outsoles to shoes and things like that. So, um, but yeah, so that, that's going to, that's going to do it. I think that's almost 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing, like I said, and then all of these other questions that are here, I'll still answer them. Um, I'll just get to them next week and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for all the questions. Thanks for all the support. Hopefully you guys like the series. It's more just kind of laid back. Um, this is inspired by AMC Movie, um, AMC Theaters Movie Channel. Uh, there's this guy, John Campia. He does movie talk no he does mailbag which is aside from movie talk where he does this kind of stuff he'll take questions that come in through the week and he'll just answer them with his own opinion um real laid back style i like it i listen to those kind of things all the time i literally don't miss an episode that they do or video uh that they do and um i love their stuff and so this is this is inspired by that um i know that i get a lot of random questions like the ones that i just answered and uh so yeah so that's what that's what this is all about um so thanks to amc movie theaters i used to work for amc um a long time ago <laughs> that's where i met my wife actually um but yeah i used to work for amc theaters i still know people that work at like the home office and stuff and i have a vip um like movie card so i can get into any movie anytime for free uh so yeah so um but yeah so i really love that channel and uh, that's where the inspiration for this came from so um don't ever be afraid to think and acknowledge who you are inspired by because not one idea is ever original. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys. Thanks for all your support. Stay tuned for next week. Uh, again, asknightwing at gmail.com. You can ask me pretty much anything. And um, if I get to your, your, uh, your email, then I'll answer it. So thank you guys again, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. So till next time, guys, have a good one. Thank you.